time ago some weird guys in glasses decided to do a podcast i didn't have any glasses back then i did <laughs> so you were the weird guys i was the weird guys i was three <laughs> weird guys doing a podcast those weird guys still are doing a podcast for some reason six six years later six years six, six years. years later but six years, six years, <laughs> but things have changed. It's 2021. We've, we've grown up, you know, we're, we're, we're adults now. Shiver no longer spends his time turning spaghetti into art. Uh, now instead he raises avocados to put into prestigious avocado boxing matches. Because I fucking hate avocados. <laughs> uh, Nakara no longer is a moose. Uh, no, now instead he's merely dressed as a moose, except that his pants are ducks. Yeah, sounds right. And me, I gave up my most passionate hobby of roller disco and have moved on 
to the world of professional roller ballet. Welcome. Sounds, also sounds correct. To the relay station. Welcome to the relay station, everybody. Uh, we have some fancy sorry. new fancy new graphics, and we are now streaming to Twitch and YouTube. Hello on YouTube, if anybody's watching. <laughs> these these graphics are also going to change. We're we're just going to be trying out mm -hmm. different overlays because uh, we feel like it. So this is just what I had ready already. Um, yeah, it's uh, we're 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 at a new time now because. Um, I mean, honestly, just because the, the time we were at before got a little chaotic Unte with, with untenable. family. Untenable, yeah. yeah, with family, which sucks. Uh, there's a lot of people that watched us at the old time that aren't going to be able to watch us now, which I'm still really sad about. I will miss every single one of them. But uh, uh, now we're simulcasting to YouTube. That makes up for it, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. Good. Just making sure. Yep. Uh, so before we before we get into it, and we've got a whole roadmap to uh, to cover tonight, I guess. There's only a couple hundred entries in it. It's not that big a deal. Yeah, no. It, I mean, <laughs> it, we'll we'll be through this in no time at all. Before we get to also, that dang roadmap, I should note there are a couple hundred entries in the roadmap, and it's I think less than half of the total entries that will be in the roadmap when it's completely ready. Yeah, there are going to be. Uh, numerous. Oh, hey, Jake. Uh, we fucking miss you. It's true. We I really do. I miss you. I can't speak for those two assholes, but I fucking miss you, you bastard. But I'm also really pleased for you. But I really miss you. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> Everyone misses Jake. Um... Yeah, there's going to be more funny. updates. When Jake, when Jake jumped in, like six more people started watching. Just because he's in chat. I mean, I don't, I don't blame them, <laughs> to be honest. So we're going to um, cover the roadmap mainly today. And then, uh, I mean, the next episode will probably continue to cover uh, the roadmap. And then the next episode, there will probably be an update to the roadmap. And then we'll continue covering the road. So basically, we're just... We're just gonna cover the roadmap from now on. <laughs> oh, we're 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 uh, swearing off ISC. Uh, I mean, I guess we, we can, should be back we can... next week. By the way, yeah. Um. But before before we get into that, uh, I it it is a new year, but realistically, not much has changed. Uh. The world is still on fire, possibly even more on fire than it was in 2020. Uh, Being which, optimistic. It's only which, January. <laughs> I, I, I know. Um, I, I just want to. Fairness, we really expect a linear <laughs> moment and passage of time that doesn't even actually exist, really, to change fucking anything. Yes, we did. Because we're human. Well, you're naive. <laughs> no, I'm human. Um, no, I, I, I hope That's everyone's... That's debatable. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch, shiver. You're Canadian first. That's fair. Um, Are Canadians humans? Uh, no, we're better. <laughs> more humble, too. <laughs> we're more cold adapted. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you get escorted, if you get... I, I'm not sure what the word would be, you know, escorted out or kicked out of Calgary. Legally, on the books, they still have to give you a horse and a rifle and escort you to the boundaries of the province, state, city. You know, I'd call BS, but that's probably correct. <laughs> I mean, legally in Calgary, they still require every business to have a, uh, a hitching point out front for a horse. <laughs> I can try to move the camera. It just doesn't look as good on my main screen. Um, Cause it like it comes down over the screen a little bit, and it really bugs me. But I'll try. I, you know what, Captain Scurry, just for you. Three quarter Ares view is freaking me out. I like it. <laughs> Better? You look 
now we can do like Rick Moranis from that view. Really? <laughs> little bit. Little bit. I'll take it. Oh, I'll take man. it. Um, I won't complain about that. I mean, it, it, it's still me on camera, so you're still suffering through that. But hey, the the funny thing is, people, I I, I very frequently am looking at my right monitor when I'm on camera, and people don't seem to ever bug me about it. I always I always think someone's gonna get angry at me for it. Though. <laughs> don't, don't wow! <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> anyway. Oh, shall we jump into the roadmap? It's not like we don't have any things to talk about here. No, there's. I wanted to do something before we... Uh, Jake, we definitely didn't get production value. I just found a thing that I could press and it would do it all. Um, literally. <laughs> definitely no production we value. Pro we bought production value. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Eric and I spent days making beautiful new overlays that were fantastic, three-dimensional... Very star citizen y, and Eris is all like, Oh, look what I've done! <laughs> and we're like, Fuck you. I know. I I was like, Okay, guys, can you can you do me some some work and like figure this out? And then and then I got this, and I was like, Oh, I, if I just do this, oh, look, it's fancy. Anyway, we're still gonna swap between them because I like the other ones as well. So we're just gonna change it up pretty much every episode. I keep looking over here. But I should be looking here. Um, anyway. No, before we get into the roadmap, I wanted to say we it is a new year. Not much has changed. Uh, I do hope everyone is having a, a better new start to their new year, though. Uh, I hope everyone's keeping safe. And uh, uh, yeah, if let me if, if you feel like uh, including it, uh, throw throw us a message on how your how your new year is going. What's uh, you know? Did you make any New Year's resolutions? Why would you ask anyone to do that? Everyone's just going to say it's fucking shit. <laughs> it's a continuation of the shit pile that started last year. It's only getting shittier. The world <laughs> is on fire. Fuck you for asking. Fuck this year. I'm see, going well, back to sleep. And Miles, is, Miles is having a great year. So look No, see, look. Look. <laughs> April 30th. <laughs> <laughs> it, it has been a while since we've had a full volume Thanks. shiver. Look, you know what? You know what's coming out? April thirtieth, new Pokemon Snap. I'm having a great year. What makes you think there's going to be a fucking planet to live on on April thirtieth? <laughs> <laughs> all right. You might as well just say, oh, yeah. Geez. In May, you're all going to get gold bars, and <laughs> no, I can't say that. All money will be made from chocolate. Because no one's going to fucking care. No one's going to be alive. We're going to have a bartering system of wood and iron. What about Vespian gas? I very nearly just destroyed my $200 keyboard <laughs> spraying through my drink all over it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, wood it's iron. <laughs> uh, it, it, oh <laughs> Shivers have been playing too many uh, uh, building games. <laughs> I've been watching the fucking news. Oh, that's a good point. Oh my. Uh, hello, Kate Exon. Kate Exon. Kate. I'm probably saying your name wrong. Please tell me how to spell it. How to say it right. Uh, it's spelt C A D X N. Uh, that's not how it's spelled. That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> I like okay. this guy. Wouldn't we having him on the podcast? <laughs> All right. Look, I'm tired. I'm gonna go with. Okay? I'm gonna go with correction. There you go. Okay. Um, so we're gonna move on to the show and tell stuff oh the fucking roadmap oh right the one that we talked about 20 minutes ago we're actually not even moving on to the roadmap yet because eric put a a video link in our discord and i clicked yes, it I did. and i was like oh my god that is so cool so we're gonna play it 
He usually doesn't do that. I usually send him stuff and he's like, screw you. Because look at that. Uh, we can't see anything. What? Step away. We see, oh, there we go. Now it showed up. Wow, that was a long delay. Uh, thanks for the follow, Kate Exon. I... Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> I, we need to, I, we need I to want, have a new dance after all these years. Oh no! Particularly, keep it like pay attention to right, like there. Oh my god! Oh, when no, the, uh, when it, I like, was looking over there. But you told me to look there, so I'm gonna look there and not over there. <laughs> god, I'm. That is. I'm. I'm. I want, my, my favorite thing about this is that like piece of metal that comes flying towards him and lands like 20 feet away from him. <laughs> it is very good. Yeah. Um, yeah. I like the Cylon armor. The, the armor is yeah. pretty cool. It's a nice touch. Uh, there, I feel like there needs to be a little bit more debris, but uh, God. It's GPU, so... it's GPU <laughs> relate. Uh, it's very GPU heavy. I'll put it that way. Yeah, there I. Wasn't an explosion at a cheese factory, Harris. Debris everywhere. Oh God. Well, we know Shiver didn't change it all between December and January. Oh, I did. I did make one New Year's resolution. <laughs> it was that I'm only going to drink alcohol when I'm writing, uh, because I I want to push myself to write more, and I want alcohol, the beer, to be my reward for writing. Um, I had forgotten what being on a podcast with Shiro was like. I might have to amend. <laughs> Technically, you could drink while you were writing the intro. <laughs> uh, you could slash your wrists. You could drink alcohol. Oh, those are both good ideas. Yeah, don't, Moving I, on. I, I'm legally obliged by Twitter guidelines. Don't actually slash your wrist. Or drink alcohol. Yeah, we found that one out recently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do, apparently you can't uh, drink alcohol on Twitch and then say the name of the alcohol, which is really I strange. Either. That I like. If I walk, if I was barefoot, and I walked that way, and you saw my feet. Bam, banned. Would we get banned? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, anyway, I love that explosion. It's amazing. And mm -hmm. now let's move over to the star of the show. I did, well, before we go to the roadmap, I did also want to mention, this is something else I put into our uh, chat. Um... This is from about nine days ago, but we haven't had a show in like, what, three or three, three and a half weeks, something like that? Four weeks? I don't know. Sometime. Um, Chad John or Clive Johnson, sorry, from CIG mentioned uh, nine days ago that um, they have put in a hot fix um, and they have seen a 99% reduction in a specific type of uh, 30K disconnect that they were seeing and a 44% reduction overall of 30K. Uh, disconnects. Obviously, they still want to reduce them further, but uh, it's still a big improvement. So, apparently, m almost all of the remaining 30k disconnects are caused by server crashes and not the client anymore. So that's also a big plus. More stable is more good. Yeah, and I'll just drop the link to that comment into our chat. I was thinking about moving to Switzerland recently. Yeah. There are many advantages, but the flag's a big plus. <laughs> God damn it, Shiver. <laughs> oh. <sighs> oh. Love it. Um, do you, though? <laughs> I, I, I do. I genuinely do. I love puns. They are... They are this little bit of, of just joy and pain but really aren't the two of those best when combined 
That Super, reminds me er, of this er, time I was dating an elevator. I had to end it, though. There were too many ups and downs. <laughs> uh, David? <laughs> yeah? Are you only streaming at 720p60? Burr? You're 720p60 on both YouTube and Twitch. Just FYI. <laughs> That's weird. Not sure if that was in, not sure if that was intentional or not. Not intentional, but I'll I'll look into why that output. Uh, it probably doesn't matter that much for the first episode. Yeah, output I, is yeah, 720. I'll 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 have to change it for the next time. Yep, no problem. Uh, okay. FYI. Roadmap. I love this dog to bits. Unfortunately, he got a bit flirty with the seeing eye dog. I had to end it though, because she was just leading him on. Oh, no. <laughs> We're going to put a disclaimer before this episode. <laughs> In every episode. <laughs> oh, my. Okay, so I hope that everyone in chat has had a chance to look at the roadmap. If not, it's fine because we're going to go through parts of it. Um, hey, Jake, have you had a chance to look at the roadmap? Yeah, Jake, what do you think of it? What do you think of the uh, of the roadmap? Oh, okay. He hasn't seen it yet. That's fine. Oh, he hasn't seen it. Okay, that makes sense. Um, first thing to call out, let's start at the top. Uh, this is Progress Tracker V0.5, so that should be a dead ringer right there that they this is not done. This is not the... Uh, they're not putting this out and never going to update it again. Uh, at least that's the hope. Um, but, uh, but yeah, um, there's already a ton of information on here and there's more coming and, uh, also updates to the UI, hopefully. And anyway, go ahead. I, I like this Mr. little, David. I like the little line that's like, here's where we are. We're all, we're almost halfway through January. That's cool. Um, We're actually over halfway through January, so I don't know why it's telling us. Oh we're yeah, not. fail zero on your 10. line is broken. It gets every two weeks, it doesn't get updated every <laughs> week or anything like that. So oh, you know, I see. Okay, so it's not Jesus. live. It's just okay. I see. That's that's zero on ten. Um, we literally had Jake just say that. <laughs> I it's. I thought I, that the try the, the like line might be actually accurate to what day it is. Look, we've been talking about... The technology for that is decades away. <laughs> we've been talking about CIG. The, the three of us, literally, have been talking about CIG for six years. Every week. Yeah, Shiver Shiver was harassing us in chat back then, but yeah. Yeah, but he was still there talking about it with us. <laughs> yeah, he was. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't get away from that. Um <laughs> And Jake was there too, but Jake, you're not on the podcast with us. So hold your horses. All um, right. So there you are ready? In Calgary, especially for that. <laughs> there are. No, I. B before we really get too far into details, this is what we've been asking for for six years, right? I mean, all, almost every year there's a point. There are, are we're a couple of points in the year where we'd be like, so we have no idea what's going on. We can't really talk about anything. Nothing's being said. Uh, we don't know where anything is. Right. Mm -hmm. And, but this this tells us where everything is. Like, let's look through the deliverables. You've got each of the teams. Mm -hmm. And this isn't all the teams. More are going to get added. But, I mean, what, what team do you care about? Uh, let's I look at... Look uh, at yeah, where do you want to look? 42 level design 1 FPS team. Sure. Let's look at that. They've got 13 deliverables. It's all separated out by chapters. Cool. Uh, oh, look. A couple of those chapters... And, and everything starts in January. But a number of those chapters are clearly already being worked on and then there's some that will start later that's fine okay let's open up a chapter let's open up chapter 19 duration 40 weeks designing implementing and iterating on chapter 19 look at that oh we can just see Perfect. 
that they're they're working on chapter 19 and they're there's like a it's there it shows us everything that they're working on i i I don't know. Like, what, like you're good, you're, you're good with that. <laughs> I'm, I'm really, really pleased with this because this is what we've we've. Oh, Sid Vicious prefers chapter nineteen to chapter eleven. I mean, chapter nineteen is taking a lot longer than chapter eleven. Look at that, thirteen weeks extra. What about chapter twelve? Oh, chapter eleven weeks. has two people on it though. So does chapter twelve. Yeah, it's true. Oh yeah, look. We can see exactly how many people are in each. Like, it, it's, this is, this to me is the most, Star Citizen captured me when, uh, like, I, I backed because it looked cool and it was made by the guy that made Freelancer. Awesome. I loved Freelancer. Mm -hmm. Great game. Um, but it really captured me when uh, one of my friends wrote a forum post asking some questions and then Chris Roberts answered those questions. Like Chris Roberts mm -hmm. himself answered his questions. And I was like, oh, oh, so that's sort of what open development is. They're going to talk to us, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I just, th this to me seems like the culmination of that in that, They'll still probably talk to the us, best, but now... And probably the best way to do it when you now have 650 employees. Yeah. You know? Shiver... is a big thing. <clears throat> have you, like, have you played through this at all? You've looked through the roadmap, right? Oh, yeah. What do you think? Like, what does it feel like to you? It, it's, it's a more detailed roadmap than you get from most developers uh, pretty much it, really. you, can look at it. you just look at it you can say this is where they are this is what they're doing this is how many people are working on it i mean sure you're gonna there's gonna be people who are gonna sit there and extract their own should i should i quickly it, should know, i quickly pull up cyberpunk's roadmap and compare the two no let's not do that but you can you know people are going to be able to look at it and draw their own conclusions oh there's two people working on this this is going to take forever but then people are going to be added come back added come back and that's not going to be reflected in the refresh rate um you know with the refresh rate of the roadmap so sometimes it could be slightly misleading if people draw extra data that isn't there mm -hmm. oh, apparently i'm too quiet well, yeah Wallace, i'm i'm working on it I'm just going to max you. Myself up. I've turned you up. All right, Hope then, Dave. <laughs> Hopefully that'll but work. That's, that's always going to happen. Shit like that is always going to happen because people want this project. People, you know, for one reason yep. or another, they want results. And they're going to look at this. They're going to extract their own data. They're going to come to their own conclusions. But you should just look at what is there and look at where it is at that particular time. Box. Balls. Yes. Um, the other thing to note here, just a quick note because it, it popped into my head. There are two pieces to the roadmap, two separate modes of looking at it. There is a progress tracker and a release view. These are completely distinct. So the release view is what is actually coming um, in you know, this patch or coming in this patch. Um, the the um, durations that are given in the progress tracker are by no means written in stone. They are uh, we think it's going to take this long at this point, and it may very well take longer, or our priorities might shift, or you know, so on and so forth. The only things that actually have a somewhat locked down release timeline are the things that are in release view. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I'll I'll wait while Jake does some typing, but. I mean, so release view is sort of what we've had for a long time, mm -hmm. right? Except they did they did they did um, improve it a little bit. Yeah, but it's it's basically what we've had. It shows us, you know, hacking yeah. tech is in development. Uh, the Merlin Connie docking, which is amazing, I just, 
is in I there. Just wanna, I just wanted to reinforce to people that if you see something is going to, oh, force reactions ends, it looks like at the end of February, oh, we're definitely going to get those in the next patch. It's not necessarily true. There are a lot of dependencies, and there's a lot of things that we don't see on here still that, um, that could people start... draw their own conclusions. This is why yep. that when you buy a package, it says, you know, this may change. This is entitling mm. you to X, Y, and Z. That's why there's a huge, great, big thing you have to click on <laughs> like before a, you see the roadmap humor. that says, caveats, this yeah. is going to fucking change. Don't say that this is how it's going to be. Don't say that this is a promise. And then there's always someone who turns around and says, well, you promised us this. Uh, and Jake it's is saying... Inevitable. It's just how things are. Jake is letting or is is reminding me of something that was in the roadmap roundup, basically saying that uh, release views problem for a long time is that uh, you know things move out of patches, right? Like release view would promise something and then it disappears and reappears in two patches or whatever. Um, they are introducing in the next roadmap update some new UI for that that will help explain when something is locked in. So you'll be able to see which features for a patch are locked in and which might still disappear, which again, great. So we can like, we'll know that say uh, the non-commercial overlays for refinery stations are locked in or the new asteroids mm -hmm. are locked in and the other stuff could still move. Love that. Um, but, the, I mean, the main addition to this was really the progress tracker, which... Yeah. I mean, I... Yeah. Um, Eric, can you talk on this for, like, 12 seconds? Yeah. I will be right Absolutely. back. All right. Don't show your feet. <laughs> All right, so um, so we have um, a lot of the a lot of the existing teams are already on here, but we also do still have all of the core tech coming that will be added. Um, I actually maybe Jake can help us with this. It was supposed to be added in uh, in January. Is it still on track for the next update? Give it thirty seconds. Yes, oh, it is. Okay, seconds. perfect. So we will get the rest of the teams, including the Cortec and everything, um, added uh, on our on the next update, which uh, should be this month. Um, and then we'll have a ridiculous amount of stuff on here. There's already a ridiculous amount of stuff on here, but uh, yeah. So I'm... Uh, Jake asked in chat what my favorite deliverable is. And I'm, uh, I've been sort of torturing myself about it. I don't... Very hard because there's a lot of really cool stuff in here. Um, but there are a couple references to jump points in here. And I'm going to have to say that's probably the most exciting thing for me. I was super excited when we saw the look dev for jump points like five, six years ago. <laughs> um, that was the town hall. When the heck was the town hall? That was 2015. So yeah, it was uh, six years ago. Um, yeah, I'm really, uh, really looking forward to that. Um, what about you, Shiver? What's your favorite thing in here that you've seen? I'm going to give you a cheat answer and say absolutely anything and everything related to multi-crew. That's Fair going to be one of the uh, Star Citizen's uh, biggest and most unique in... Well, not okay. The, that's a terrible way to phrase it. That's going to be one of Star Citizen's biggest pulls is the way it's implementing its co-op gameplay. That's, yeah. that's also a terrible way to say it. But I'm the multi-crew, all on the same, same ship, all working together. That That is the Star Trek dream going on mm -hmm. right there. And I'm oh, really, that's, yeah. want that. It's going to be amazing. Um, all right, I so... am back. Sorry. The other thing I wanted to mention beyond jump points is that we also have a few things that we got that actually this roadmap told us is that they are actively working on the Nix system right now. They're also obviously we're working on the Pyro system, which we knew about, but there's also 
um, one unannounced project in here and an unannounced planetary system as well. So there's another planetary system beyond Nyx and Pyro that they're working on right now and Stanton. So there's uh, there's a lot going on right now. Um, all right. Do you want to start walking through all these deliverables, David? Yeah. Where do you want to start? Um, let's, start, start at the the, let's, let's just start at the top. So we don't all right. miss anything. Um, there's a lot. So, you know, if anybody has, see like sees one they want us to talk more about, then uh, feel free to call it out. Jake, start at the top. <laughs> so, um, force reactions here, 25 weeks expanding. So that's going to go for a while into July, probably. Uh, I want to take a quick here look here at the release view. Why did I force reactions? So force mm -hmm. reactions is in the release view for three point one three. Expanded reactions, yeah, direct we, and direct and sustained forces. The reason it goes beyond that, and the on the way they talked a little about a little bit about this, you will see things that are on release view and on progress tracker that go beyond. And that's because they're continually evolving; like they'll add more and more stuff to it as it goes along. Uh, I would like to see. Oh, I clicked the descriptions match for release view and. Well, they won't match because they're what they're releasing isn't always what's what they're working on. Yeah, that's fair. You know what I mean? Because that, that's like there's they're releasing one thing in three one three, and they're continuing to work on it further. So actually, they do look so they're they, fairly similar. Oh yeah, okay, no, they do, they do because match. It's starting off with the reactions from gunfire, kinetic impact, that sort of thing, and then eventually, I would imagine they're going to win implement it so it reacts to being punched in the face or something like that well also things like running into other ships running into planets um true running into planets running into planets we've all done that a few times more than a few running times. into asteroids chris yeah. roberts <laughs> zero g push and pull that'll be good um it, I, that's going to be an interesting experience when you're flying around with your friends and you like look down the hallway and you you hit something and your your friend just smacks into the ceiling. <laughs> well, and this is this is making me think back to the um, uh, the tally video, like four years ago, the retaliator video yeah. where, where they, they were crawled moving inside through the ship. It they were moving through the ship and they had those zero G push and pull yeah. animations. And then people on the internet, because it's the internet got really, really pissed off because those, like those animations for that part had been faked. They were baked they, in. They, yeah. they were baked in, right? People got really, really, really angry. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to see actual zero G push pull and, and yeah. yeah. And they've been working on this for a long time. Like, Zero-G Push and Pull has come on and off the schedule probably half a dozen times. Um, I so, mean, if, if you it, think about it, like, <clears throat> I can't even remember what games now, but one of the things that I, I, I personally really notice is in games is when you're walking near something and your character will, like, put out their hand and touch the wall or, like... But most games don't implement that. It's because it's tech, from a technical standpoint, and this is going to sound fucking nuts. It's kind of hard to introduce that because you've got to have all these different elements communicating with each other. Um, the wall has to be recognized as a wall by your character. Your character has to recognize that there's a wall, and it's just a hell of a lot easier if you just have this generic input that there is wall, do not walk through wall. Because otherwise, you have to say, well, how close is the character to the wall to say how much because otherwise you're going to clip through you're going to look like you're doing something then you're freakishly bad for your joints and so on then yeah. you have to worry about all the different like hand positions on the wall and the fingers and how they're placed on the wall and yeah it's and then I... there's the wall as far <laughs> as the engine concerned it's just a texture it's just a flat texture and anything that you see on there it's graphically designed it's not actually bumping out to you 
whereas with um, the way that Star Citizen are rendering pretty much everything with, at the moment, DX12, or is it DX11? It's still DX11. But when they, they switch over to Vulcan, they they're actually going to have this te this wall texture is going to be, you know, th there's a universal sign for bumping out. <laughs> it will recognize <laughs> <laughs> levels, so to speak. It will recognize, you know, well, that's further in than there, that's further out than there, and your character mm -hmm. should react to it rather than just generic arm, wall distance, and clip through flat texture because the engine says it's flat. So Shiver, we kind of saw that a little bit with when they um, they introduced the uh, foot placement thing, right? Yes. Yeah, how the feet that's are again, placed that's like, sending properly out the, um, on things. Uh, it's like ray casting. Is that sending out? Ray yeah, and it, it's saying, you know, well, this is at that level, this is at that level, and your character needs to put his leg to there. And it's a lot of maths that are going into this, which is why they have to... They found that, I don't want to say workaround, the, the way that they implement it of having your character casting out these rays in a limited space around itself, which is a hell of a lot less resources than saying, you know, casting these rays out across the entire landscape, obviously. And then on top of that, you've got the physics grids that are coming in. So it's going to be very much, you know, the Russian doll syndrome of this is aware of this, this is aware of this, this is aware of this, and saving you on the resources and using the resources you have in an efficient manner. Someone's probably going to correct me on absolutely everything that I just <laughs> said. And in which case... Good. All right. Next one is personal inventory. I am excited for this. Um, not going to lie. And I know this is something else entirely. It just makes me think of it. But I hate the current Moby Glass inventory system. <laughs> it was it. very, it was very hacked in. Hate it. So I'm, I'm. How much do you hate it, David? Uh, well, let's let's just put. The, I don't buy or equip anything in Star Citizen ever. Fair enough. Oh, dude, Jake, we we upped the production value, man. <laughs> Uptime works. <laughs> <laughs> He's all freaked out. <laughs> all right. So, um, this is, so this personal inventory is specifically referring to, um, players can store things on their persons. So you will see weapons hanging off of you. You'll have like healing items in your pockets. You'll have grenades strapped to you and all that lovely stuff. I still really hope that they keep the, if you shoot somebody who has a grenade strapped to them, it will blow up. Um, I mean, if you shoot them in the grenade, um, that would make me very happy. Well, that that's supposed to happen. They've talked about that, mm -hmm. that that being a thing of you could snipe the grenade on someone's uh, armor mm -hmm. and that grenade would explode. Mm -hmm. I know it's just... Oh. And actually seeing it in the game are not the same thing. J Jake is <laughs> making a good point. It's taken us ten minutes to get through three three inventory yeah, no. or three items and there's two hundred and twenty uh, seven. So it'll take us roughly six hundred and seventy one minutes to get through everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Approximately. Um so one thing to note about this one, it does utilize the eye cache, so we will not see this in the game. Even if it's done on the on the progress tra tracker, we will not see it until eye cache is done. So these are the dependencies we were talking about, and something that they might be able to show us later uh, down the road on the roadmap is these dependencies where this can't come out until this comes out, or this can't work be worked on anymore until this is worked on, and so on and so forth. Um, next one up. FPS radar and scanning. Improved radar. For people. Important. Next one. <laughs> For oh, well, Excellent. Next. Um, so, sorry, I got briefly distracted. Um, the FPS radar, this one's going to be really cool. We don't have any kind of FPS radar of any, like, at all right now. Yeah. You have no idea where anything is when you're running around on the ground. Um, so it'll be really nice to have, for sure. Uh, cooperative locomotion. Uh, 
think Legend of Zelda puzzles. You can now grab things and push them into place. I'm, I'm thinking by the term cooperative, <laughs> this means multiple players can grab an object and, and move it. I hope so. Um, that's, I mean, it, uh, how else would it be cooperative in that case? <laughs> I, well, it's cooperating with the actual objects and items in the game. Oh, world. okay. I see what you're saying. I, I'd like to know. I, I'm not saying that that is. But... And, and this oh, is just a weird aside. I'd like to know if you can have, like, an Aurora and then line up, like, a hundred people behind it and all of them push on each other and have the Aurora fly into them. And if you can have, like, a people versus Aurora tug-of-war, tug you know? Push-a-war? Push-a-war, yeah. Can, is that... Jake, as as the, the, the... I can guarantee you right now, given that it's a spaceship, the Aurora will win. <laughs> well, how many people? Or not? No, on land, so that the people have they, they can dig their feet in. You know, the Aurora will win. It'll turn them all to paste. <laughs> I think it'd be a an interesting. Fine paste. I preferred it when I was just telling puns. <laughs> uh, miscellaneous support. Yeah, I don't think we need to yeah. spend much time on that. There are people who support all the other deliverables in this section um, yeah. on an ad hoc basis. Uh, healing <clears throat> TO and actor status tier one. T0, Did you just say T-O. T-O? I just, just... <laughs> Look, look. <laughs> if it's a zero, um... if it's a zero in text, it should have a strike through the zero. Okay. Otherwise, it looks on a first glance, like a capital O. Strike through your zero. Bruh. They're different um, shapes, David. <laughs> what, if they're, what, what if they're reading this in a Norwegian or any other Scandinavian language, though? That's going to confuse them. Anyway, we're going to move right along. Healing in T0 and actor status T1. So this uh, basically is continuing the evolution that we've seen of the, the actor status system, the player's status, your your health, your how cold are you, what's your blood pressure and your uh, your heart rate, your respirations, all that stuff. Um, uh, in interesting, interesting thing to <clears throat> note here, though, is that it uh, it doesn't require any design support. It's just animation, engineering, and art. Poss possibly right, because it's right all now. Over... Yeah. For for the T0 and T1, there's no design li uh, mm -hmm. listed. Which means the design is probably done. This is, this is down to implementation, probably. All right. Next one up. Player interaction experience T zero hints and interactions. Are you excited, David? Uh, for Pi, yeah, I love Pi. <laughs> I mean, yeah, well, who doesn't love Pi? Shiver, do you love Pi? I fucking miss Pi. I can imagine. I, you know what? Um, Truth be told, I actually don't like Pi unless it's strawberry rhubarb. There are no pies you like other than strawberry rhubarb. What about Apple chicken pot pie? pie? Chicken pot pie is incredible. Chicken pot pie, Steak okay. Pie. I love uh, tandoori pie. I love all of those. Any Ooh, any um, pie. meat pies, amazing, great. But like sweet pies, only strawberry uh, rhubarb. Uh, Jake strawberry is, rhubarb is an excellent choice. Jake is confirming that uh, design work is finished for actor tier one. Um, He's saying that in other places where that might, where we might not see design, it might be because the design's on a different team. Like, it might the design team, people designing it might be working on squadron or something. I don't know, but yeah, uh, something else. for that one, design is done for it. They just have to implement it, which is great. So for Pi, um, this is basically a whole bunch of different features that that uh, tell the players what uh, their status is, what item status is, what the environment status is, and so on and so forth. Basically, this is ways to tell the player what's happening in the world around them. Um, very going to be extremely important uh, to get right for a game like Star Citizen, where there is so much 
to know about the game um having these little hints and stuff will be huge like where do i go and what do i need to do next and so on and so forth also very easy to get wrong in a game that's this big <clears throat> yep um next one up is bespoke take and place so this one's uh, 19 weeks. We have one person on animation and one person on engineering. Uh, definable and bespoke take-and-place animations for specific items. For example, the take-and-place animation for a helmet should be different from a bottle or a grenade. Make sense? I'm so I, I love that they're doing it. I'm going to be really interested to see on how many bespoke animations they make because i i don't know if they can make bespoke animations for every single item in the game unless they can find a way to procedurally generate some of that um mm. on the plus side like all the boxes are there are only certain size of bo sizes of boxes so they pretty much have that down that's pretty easy um it's the little items things like chocolate bars and bottles of water that and making sure your your hand doesn't clip through them yeah it's pretty hard like you even see that a lot in finished games where your your hand still clips through things um so that'll be interesting to see how how uh, well they can nail that they my favorite thing this might be my here you go jake this might be my favorite thing in here we have an entry on our progress tracker for mop and bucket um that is important <laughs> uh but basically this mean this is actually a little bit wider than that it, this allows support for ai janitors to be able to use multiple tools in either hand so this is a big thing with star citizen which goes a lot further than um most games uh because in star citizen the ai has to be able to do these like hundreds of dis different tasks um and they can't be hard coded to do all of them so there's this thing where they have usables and and you are developing this ai system where they can use usables and they need to be able to use them all um regardless of what they are without having to hard code everything that makes sure. sense Shiver, uh, which hand do you use your tools in? Both. Fair enough. So you already have your mop and bucket support. Got it. <laughs> Third hand. Uh, prone tier one. Uh, being able to go prone. Uh, yeah. Sliding. The coolest thing about prone in, in here, I'm not going to spend any time on this it's just that this also applies to npcs so it's going to be uh players and npcs um so npcs will no longer take it lying down <laughs> no they will take it lying down now they they didn't before <laughs> i'd just like them to sit in chairs no you sit in a chair you, oh you're doing it wrong right now you're supposed to be standing oh okay sorry I knew he would do it if I said it. <laughs> oh, don't, don't. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Shiver, aren't you glad you came on the show with us? <laughs> I, you're giving me kittens. I know how accident prone he is. <laughs> I can see bad things happening with all sorts of possibilities there. Oh, dear. And he gets on it, and he's shaking, and it's like, oh, fucks, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. Oh, so man. I really like this next one here, sliding. Um, yeah. Because I've, I've been playing a fair amount of, of Apex Legends, uh, and the most fun thing... They do sliding the best. The most fun thing to do in that game is run at, like, a... A hill and just slide all the way down the hill. If CIG can get sliding right, mm -hmm. they can they can get and it all done. Not only sliding down the hill, sliding down the hill where there's a gun in your hands and you can shoot oh, yeah. people as you're going down, and you're it's just amazing. Yeah, <laughs> sliding into someone and knocking them off their feet. Yeah. Oh yes, yeah. also that. Yep. Yeah. We also call that bowling. <laughs> 
Uh, player interaction <laughs> experience. Lockers and inventory. Uh, awesome again. Yep. Let us store shit. Um, they actually, you'll see all over the freaking game, they already have these there. They're all over the place. They've already built in lockers to tons of places because you will need them. Now, there is going to be a question of how much those lockers can be physicalized and will there be any cross of lockers or is if you put your stuff in the locker this particular locker you can't get it anywhere else but that locker right yeah they'll have I to decide how, how much is. they'll decide how much they want to gamify that later yeah i think because most games most games have it uh i mean yeah most most games <laughs> have it so that you can put something somewhere and then pick it up other places i don't I think Cyberpunk. they're going to design it they're going to design it right now so that you can do this such that every locker is physicalized, right? But it's nothing stopping them from changing their mind later if it's too too onerous, you know? It's my my I only worry a hybrid Sorry, go solution. Ahead. If the, if you like constellation has got a buttload of lockers on it and it would be it would be disingenuous, disingenuous to have those locker inventory accessible on a complete different planet it, it would take away from exploration it would take away from the consequences of what you've chosen for equipment on exploration and it gives uh, that more immersive feel if you've bedecked your constellation out with all this equipment ready to go exploring and you find yourself on another planet with all there plus there's also the fact of if your ship gets blown up all your shit's gone it gives you a more an in increase anxiety factor and more reason to actually defend your ship because you've got the the golden gun stored in your constellation and you've got to take it back yet but then you get jumped on the way hello and <laughs> yeah yeah um so i think they're going to start out trying to physicalize everything for sure um and i think along the way they might decide that some things shouldn't be physicalized um but that's the beauty of having a whole beta ahead of them. <laughs> yeah. My, my worry, as always, is the, oh, I need this thing, but it's 18 systems away. Why'd you leave it behind? <laughs> because I didn't know I needed Can't it. Can't need it that much. It's, well, oh, I, you, you know. Gather as much information about where you're going before you See, went. The smart thing there, if they do want to keep it physicalized, is to just have a service that's be like, can i'm gonna hire somebody to get yeah. this thing back for me let let me um, let me pay to have it shipped and it can take some time yeah. but let me pay to move things around so that i don't have yeah. to do it that that would make a lot but, more sense to me now how would you want that implemented if they go with that would because star citizen isn't going to do things by half someone would you want that put in such a way as this is a contract a player or an npc can take up this contract they take out their ship, mm -hmm. then it is literally yep. moved from X to Y, and then pirates can take it out on Y, and you're just yeah, going to be sat I there going, so. well, I lost my equipment, I lost my money, WTF. Yep. Yeah, I, I really want you to be like, I'm... In insure it. I'm, I'm four systems over, and I want my favorite pillow, because I can't sleep without my favorite pillow, and then... Um, it's on um, halfway there. I got a halfway on its journey. I got a notification on my Moby glass that my favorite pillow is now several particles floating through space after it exploded. <laughs> but, a, but as a player, you're going to be sat there going, okay, well, I've got the insurance money, but that's no good to me out here in the middle of fuck all nowhere. And that's it's, where, it's, and again, it's one of those decisions where they need to say, you know, do we gamify this or do we keep it with yeah. that vision in mind? It's, it's going to be interesting. Um, our next one up is Ladders Tier 1. Um, ladders already work in, in, uh, in Star Citizen, but many people have noted that there are a lot of visual bugs with them. Um, and also once, like, you can't, like, once you get on it to get into a ship or something, that's the animation. You're getting into the ship, right? You can't stop midway. Uh, it depends what ladder you're talking about. There are lots of ladders in the game where you can move up and down them and, you know, like that. But yeah, a lot of the ladders are also like auto animated. So a ladders tier one improves the freedom and control while traversing ladders. Specifically, players will be able to aim and shoot weapons, use gadgets, heal, and complete other one-handed actions. 
they will also be able to dodge to the side to avoid gunfire or falling debris. Pretty cool. That one doesn't start until this summer. Um, and it will be about six months, roughly. Um, and it has one engineer and one animator working on it. Okay, so I want to see something. So you've got two quarters view, right? Which mm -hmm. sort of spreads things out for two quarters, I guess. This makes it easier to see um, yeah. further into the future. That's all. One quarter view. I'd like like a four quarter view so you can you can see just everything. There you go. Hey Jake, we want a four quarter view. Make it happen. Um, um, yeah. EVA. You want to go ahead with it? Shiver. You want to read the next one? <laughs> I have to full screen this bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, broadcasting it some shitty resolution. I can't read that bullshit. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> uh, um, Jake, Jake is saying that that is something they're working on, but right now it breaks everything. For for anyone okay. listening to this Further later, improves the EVA experience following the transition to IFCS. Introduces. Yep. Irradiated. No. <laughs> introduces limited EVA fuel and encourages the use of zero G push and pull and the multi tool multi tools tractor beam. Not gonna lie, I want Shiver to read all of them. <laughs> I thought I was gonna say something about push and pull with post or something, and I'm like, what? What? We're getting physical mail in this? <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is EVA tier two. Um, it's got 13 weeks and one designer uh, around the middle of the year. Um, and yeah, uh, obviously there's already been a lot of work on UVA. EVA already works pretty well in Star Citizen, but this is just further further pushing that. Um, it obviously isn't done, and all these little features add a lot more uh, depth and reality to it. I remember my EVA training back at the Academy. It made me sick to my stomach. Really? Thanks, Worf. Thank you for getting me. <laughs> <laughs> Is it any surprise that we're on a Star Trek TTRPG together? <laughs> so this right here, this right here is um, very important. Yes, it is. Uh, new HUD, new look and feel, new equip and remove experience, boot up and power down sequences and transitions between FPS and ship HUDs. All good. All stuff I want. Um, IFCS Intelligent Flight Control System. Yes. Um, this player interaction experience, uh, or PI, I should say, Tier 2, is um, scheduled for right, um, going from September right through the end of the year, currently. So again, this is our schedule as of right now. Um, it uh, is likely to change significantly as we go along, but um, that's where we're at right now. So we're done the actor feature team. Uh, did we lose David? No, I'm here. No, no. You're just you were frozen for a second when I looked. I mean Um Elwook or wait, no, sorry, Kedexon. I don't think we're gonna go through every single item. Uh we've only got one question though. We're immediate fucking catastrophe shit. <laughs> what? That, uh, honestly, I, I'm I'm good to go through everything in the in the roadmap, but um, it's gonna take a while. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, thanks, Jake. I needed the giggle. So, I mean, we've got two the next two episodes before this roadmap updates. We've got I I, I want to at least talk about the main things here. Uh, there's a lot of important like I I we're gonna be able to skip lots of the squadron stuff the uh, like all these design FPS things not really much to talk about right all this stuff not much to talk about it's just designing things mm -hmm. that we don't know anything oh about, yeah right? that's so, that's the thing like like if you look at the squadron forty two stuff there's nothing we can say about any of it like oh look they're working on things there's wait, the coil again oh yeah. you closed it. 
screaming. Sorry. Uh, so, actor tech team. Yeah. Um, so the first two are the same as from the actor feature team. Um, they're just there are people working on force reactions on the actor tech team, and also there is miscellaneous support for the actor tech team. All right, you so know what? Five you know engineers. What? Esperanto on the plasma-based nexions, so <laughs> exotic feces <laughs> actors like, what is are he? made to <laughs> look. Connection. David, LTD make sure you stream in 1080p next time. I will. Connection and Elwook are, are peer pressuring me. I'll be right back. Experience theta, regardless of being the paid. What? Hey, Shiver, you can run the stream for a few minutes. I'll be right back. <laughs> so, the Amiga 1200 was an amazing machine. What the fuck happened there? Well, I'll tell you what happened. <laughs> Commodore went bust, and then some arsehole bought the company, brought out a new Amiga 1200, which was actually pretty good, but then they went bust, and someone else bought the Amiga. I can't remember who owns it now, but Workbench is still one of my favourite operating systems and was Windows 95 before Windows 95 existed. Amiga, bring it back. So, Shiver. I love my Amiga. While we wait for yes, Nakara to return, I have a question for you. What are oh, the shit. rules? What are the rules exactly for showing beer off on stream? You have to, you can't say it's beer or anything like that. You have to say it's incredibly fizzy, out of date Coke or something. I only really? know, I only found this out because uh, someone was watching a Critical Role uh, post game stream and they were saying, "Yeah, so we drink this fine aged orange juice." Or apple oh. juice. It's not whiskey. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, I think you drink it comes, to, are you I drinking some not whiskey as, in here? I, I think it comes I, under self destructive behavior. Because really? alcohol is bad for you. Huh. Oh. Well, I'm still going to show this off because um, I'm not going to say what it is. I just think that the can for this. Um, yeah, but you're not drinking it. I, I like no, the can for your this. Brain. Do you see this can? Ooh, that's it's a called great countdown. Can. David, you need to send me some of those in the mail. I love it. I, I actually... This show is really, it's just become overly commercialized, and now we're just advertising <laughs> products, but you'd never catch me doing that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, David, we're back. I need yeah. to know what beer that is. It's not a beer. Countdown beer? It's oh. Countdown by Bose. It's a pale something. I think it is. Oh right, it's a it's a pale um, pale water. Yeah, pale water. Uh, okay, here we go. <laughs> Roadmap. Actor yes, tech go. team. Force reactions. Uh, yeah, we can we can blow right yeah. by that. Miscellaneous support. And we're good. Support. Stair locomotion. Stair locomotion is cool. New animations yep. depending on the the speed you're going up. Weapon handling tier two. Character animation as well. Interacting with and customizing FPS weapons. Excellent. Um, the, this in games has gotten a lot better in the past couple of years. Some games have absolutely amazing weapon handling animations now. Was was playing and, like, some you can escape your weapons and stuff. Was was uh oh yeah sorry that statics me actually it's too loud. Um, sorry that's a baby monitor. Um, I was playing some uh, some Escape from Tarkov, and they've they've got a extremely detailed weapon customization system um excited to see this in star citizen uh and then more bug fixing important live mission content team harvestables mm -hmm. mineables uh oh the first iterations of looting there's a lot of there's a lot of really exciting stuff in this section <laughs> Shiver, are you on mute intentionally? No, I'm. I no, no. I'm just re adding the first initialization at <laughs> losting. This yes. implodes, assuming stargazer toties of water, med pass, and clotting of various <laughs> locations that the payer can find, store, and ask. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Um, 
<laughs> this is this is important. Nail it. It's, uh, spawning loot on places that you can go find and pick up med pens, new weapons, such. Yep. Loot. Um, basically, the loot. absolute key to any game of its kind, you have to be able to find stuff and pick it up, or else it doesn't make locations interesting. It's like the outposts are great right now, but you can't do anything there. Yeah. If you could go there and get a med pen, you might want to go there more. I mean, I don't think a med pen is going to make me go there, but new weapons? All right. Depends, how, ne- depends how hurt you are. True. <laughs> I had a friend once who had an EpiPen, but there was this time he was having some sort of attack and he really wanted me to have it, really insisted on it. I don't know what that was about. <laughs> Oh, it's so bad. 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 Uh, we've got um, more work for uh, getting pyro, the pyro system in game, which uh, I mean, this is four designers, 50 weeks. This is going to end of year this year right now, which is a long ways away. But pyro. What's wrong there, Sean? Suggesting file initial pseudonational want needed to harass the psi system into its gaff. Yep. Word for word. 100%. Uh, next up, so Pyro is obviously going to be huge. That'll be the second system. Um, and uh, yeah. I mean, they've been working on the planets already for quite a while. I think that I think once we actually get the system, it's going to be fairly mature because, really, the thing that's holding us back from being able to go into Pyro right now is that the tech side of the game is not ready yet. Jake is being coy in chat, saying this encompasses all work on Pyro before and after release. Oh, so it might come out before... Oh, he's saying it might come out before the end of this 50 weeks. Okay. Very interesting. And yes, it does need some form of server meshing or else we can't do it in the game. Uh, Delivery mission, Um, dangerous locations, more missions are important. Um, I'm... I mean, the the main thing that we need for missions really is... uh, quanta it needs to be mass mass produced and slightly different each time but more mission types is important so they can eventually populate that all out Mm -hmm. that's actually something i would really like to see them because it's going to be a dynamic system i really would love to see them continuously add new mission types over the years so that they build up this huge number of different types of missions that the quanta can give yeah like yeah well, I mean, we and and Jake is saying that these are the the handcrafted ones, and yeah, they're they have to work together. But it's there needs to be a the handcrafted ones right now aren't enough, right? You can't no. you can't have humans build enough handcrafted encounters at the Not level for a game Star like Citizen this. is doing them. No. To, to that's why the dynamic ones have to be really good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Eight ninety um, jump mission update. Uh, this is um, about dragging an unconscious N- NPC into the ship's cargo hold. Interesting. <laughs> Shiver's well, not yeah, going to comment on that? Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> He's trying very hard. Very hard not to. <laughs> Wouldn't get away with that on Twitch is all I'm going to say. Um, next up after that, we have counterfeiting and data download mission. So this, um, is implementing missions that task players with infiltrating ships defended by hostile NPCs to hack terminals. There will be both lawful and lawful variants of these missions and also that, uh, 890 jump mission. Yeah. Um, once again, we have miscellaneous support. We have an unannounced bit, which we can pretty much just blow by and bug fixing well, well... and tech debt. I, I want to say that the unannounced is interesting, though, because it's got three designers, and those three designers are working on it till Q2. And it, uh, yeah, it is starting next month, so there is—it's not like it's far away. 
it's yeah i'm i'm interested to see what that is uh bug fixing in tech debt dynamic events continued work on back-end tech to support the development of dynamic events that's important stuff uh and then a ground scramble race and reputation gates for missions and that doesn't well, mean a physical gate that means you have to have a certain reputation in order to get a certain mission yeah which is basically a a key part of rpgs at this point in the in the in the evolution of games lz1 content team interesting so landing zone one content team so tier one i assume as in important landing zones such as uh main ones on earth terra i would guess so yeah so first well, one it, up is... it has horizon orison orison yeah. orison uh, Orison V1 is in here. It has 12 artists on it right now and three designers. Um, they have 23, 23 weeks of work here. Um, and Orison is probably going to be one of the coolest landing zones because it is floating in the atmosphere of Crusader the gas giant. Um, yeah. Very neat. The lore behind that one is also fantastic. Also, the location of the uh, Crusader shipyard. There's also an unannounced thing there. Uh, hacking T0. That's going to be interesting. Um, the back-end tech to get hacking to work. And that actually doesn't seem to go very long, very far either. The uh, Yeah, ends in February. The, the UI work, the HUD work for hacking T0. Um, that's good. I, I'm I'm mainly saying that's good because I want to see some of that UI HUD work. Uh, I like seeing what stuff's going to look like. Jake, I I know some things sometimes. I read. I read good. Uh, cave improvements, two new cave entrances to the Persistent Universe. Mm-hmm. Very good. And this will be a... Um... A drive-in entrance, so you can you can take a ground vehicle in, and also a sinkhole entrance. And actually, uh, I think I chatted with Jake a little bit about this. This is kind of cool because we've um, uh, one of the things that we actually have already seen um, in uh, real space is we have no we have seen sinkholes on the surface of the moon and Mars from orbit, and um, already we're very interested in, in uh, exploring them. So I, think, I thought it was a cool addition to the game. I'm gonna oh, there's share art a for picture. It. One second, I want to check this here. This is cave improvements. Are they in here? Oh, there's some art for it. They stalag might be. Oh god. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> that was amazing. Uh, oh, I love it. I, this this art is pretty good actually. You've got is like is that a sh that's a ship flying in through the top of a cave. That's cool. I like it. It's okay. It's a hornet. I that is really cool. I like that. Also, check out the picture I just put into chat. It is a real sinkhole on Mars. Nice. Um, okay, where are we? Oh, God. I lost where we were. Uh-oh. Here we are. No, it's okay. It's all over now. No, is that we, a sinkhole or is that someone after they've had a blackhead removed? Yes. Yeah. Um, we've got more miscellaneous support and bug fissing. Then we've got pyro space stations, a small rundown rest station, rest stops, uh, another unannounced. Then there's Orison uh, Orison? B2. Orison? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just harassing David at this point. There's uh, already uh, so I shouldn't say there's already. There are five artists and one designer um, tasked for this, so this will be improving the landing zone after they do the initial implementation. Orison. Orison. Orihi son. So, how do you say son? Or Orison. I can't pronounce that. My Canadian doesn't let me. Uh, Ruin yes, station. Mm-hmm. 
and so garages. This I, I, can I take a moment? <laughs> yep. Ruin Station is is really cool for me because there has been concept art of Ruin Station since like 2012. It was yep. among the earliest bits of concept art we got. Um. Which so it's really neat to actually see it on the on the uh, roadmap and gonna be in the game. Eris it will crew. be. <laughs> I think that a ruin station will probably be the main uh, location in Pyro to oh. actually do things. Okay, we're gonna move on to the mission feature team. You're totally skipping garages. Wow. Oh, did I? Sorry, I didn't mean to skip garages. Garages, uh, new common element garages to Lorville and replacing old garages in Levski with updated versions of garages. Perfect. The mission feature team. Mission feature team, 22 deliverables. There's a lot here. All right, law system improvements. Uh, this one matters for Shiver. <coughs> uh, this for Estrada? No. Uh, proxy crime. Well, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> it's crime related. You you want to a criminal? You're a you're pirate. Only a criminal if you get fucking caught. Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> he's hundred percent a law abiding citizen until somebody sees him, and then they die, and so he's still a law abiding citizen. <laughs> I mean, proxy crime Eric is important. Me. Proxy crime is important. So if we're all on a ship. And Shiver commits a crime. We all get tagged with his crime. I mean, shut up. <laughs> only if only if somebody sees us. Uh, also, yeah. spawn... and what if the laws are different in that system? Murder could be perfectly acceptable there. In Pyro, probably. Uh, spawn be closets. ironic if arson wasn't allowed in Pyro. It would. Uh, we've got spawn closets, areas that allow NPCs to spawn outside of player view. Um, Going to be interesting because I feel like people are going to try and find those spawn closets and then just camp them and, and watch as NPCs. They absolutely will, but then... It, CIG will find a way to prevent that sort of stuff happening because that's an Eve thing. Oh, that's a bit unfair. That's more <laughs> like the mentality of an Eve player of, no, fuck you, buddy. Because some of us get kicks like that. But yes, uh, Chris <laughs> Roberts has said he doesn't want Eve 2.0 kind of thing. He doesn't want people to have uh, gate camps. So he wants people to be able to see everything in the game potentially so that kind of thing i assume counts as that you and spawn camping is a big shit let's be fair it is a bit <laughs> shitty there's yep. better ways to get a kill it's true yes mines um security network version zero initial implementation of the security system uh that's engineering working on it till end of next month actually that's pretty cool um, so this end. is a couple of things um, this allows you to know um, allows the security features to know if the players are trespassing um, and also this is part of the very beginning bit where um, criminal sightings are rooted to a communications network but um, you have to be seen when you're doing your crime right and anyway. is trespassing actually criminal or is it civil? <laughs> uh, and then there um. is dynamic mission system. When live, the dynamic mission system will allow select mission types to be dynamically tailored to the current environment and quantum at a later date. That's, uh, yep. That's, I mean, that, that's, that's pretty big. When you, see, when you see where that work is, like all that work uh, that's currently on the schedule is being done between now and May. Yeah. So. Bum, 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 bum. 
the, also an important note there at the end: these missions will be customizable, and payment will accurately reflect how far you had to travel and how difficult, how um, yeah. Uh, dangerous it was also important to note for the security stuff uh jake is saying that <laughs> later on the tracking app will actually tell you local law oh, so nice. you'll be able to just open up the app and know what the law is wherever you are uh the law being judge dread <clears throat> fucking love judge dread did you know this is totally random i only <laughs> discovered this and it's exciting as Vanilla ice cream. I love vanilla ice cream. That's a yeah, vanilla. Actually, me too. There is a vanilla's the best. There is a Whoa, 2000 everybody AD. here loves vanilla. Anyway, <laughs> there is a 2000 AD Judge Dread TTRPG, and you bet your fucking ass I bought that core book. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm really really sad that they're not making another Carl Urban Dread movie because they're, they're thinking about doing a series apparently. Really. On Netflix. Oh, that'd be amazing. Carl Urban that is a mo- genius. That movie was it so good. It would work better as a series. It was. It, it would work better as a series because there's so much going on in 2000 AD. Condensing it to 90 minutes, 120 minutes is pretty difficult. But but that was still a near perfect movie. Like it was yeah, it, it was. was phenomenal. So what you're saying well, you is I should pro- what you're saying is I should probably watch it. Yes. <laughs> they actually had Rebellion help out with that one. Really? Rebellion, yeah. local company, used to be local company to me. <laughs> nice. It's, it, surrender. You, you need to watch it. It's very good. Okay. Uh, we'll s- surrender. Allow players to be arrested without losing their life. They'll be able to <laughs> surrender by coming to a halt and powering down their ships when ordered to by security. That's good. Um, Boring. <laughs> Bounty Topical, Hunter V2. Yeah. Uh, Bounty Hunter V2 is going to be worked on for the entire year, so it's got the full 52 weeks um, with design and engineering, um, uh, enabling players to track criminals via MobiGlass security app linked to distress beacons, comm arrays, air traffic control systems, cameras, and NPC informants. This will rely on various new backend tech, virtual AI. Um, the NPC scheduler and security service. I'm really, There's really something... interested. Go ahead, Shiver. There's something uh, that is always a possible problem in any bounty hunting system, in any MMO, of if you get, as a player, a bounty placed on you, how is the game company itself going to stop you logging on as an alt, killing your main, and claiming the bounty for yourself? Hmm. Well, when you log out, will you n- won't you not be there anymore? Yeah, but you'd log well, how in. Would you, have, how would you kill yourself as an alt if you... Oh, have, unless you have, have why, why would you log out? Running. Why can't you have two accounts? Yeah. Like, Eris oh, okay. has got 50 billion PCs right now in his home, so he, he could do it. Well, there you go. You have to buy a second PC to do it, and they're probably fine with that. And another account. And in more ships. Yeah, they're probably all right with that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, still really, really... <laughs> Wow, just banned it is boxing. The... It, I'm I'm interested to see more like how will this app let you piece together little pieces of intelligence from various places to track the person? Because we we are getting very detailed gameplay for everything, even refining. And refining in most games is click <laughs> done. Click done. <laughs> right? Like there's there's nothing to it. I can't imagine CIG being like Here's the bounty. Click on the bounty. Here's their location, right? Like they you'll, won't, you'll well, that's have... the thing. They won't tell you their location. They'll give you a list of this of the sightings. Yeah. Like this this camera saw them here at this point in time, and there'll probably be some some uh, la- some like transmission time lag. So it's also going to be kind of up in the air. I I think that's going to be amazing, and it's going to make bounty hunting a really interesting profession where you actually have to track the person, though there will be a problem of someone's got a bounty, but they're not online. Like, it it would sort of segregate player base based on hours. Like, Shiver would never be able to bounty hunt someone in North America because they're probably playing, I mean, Mm -hmm. like... like We'll have to figure that part out. People playing at completely different hours will will have difficulty 
bounty hunting each other. Anyway, uh, we got some unannounced. There's the tracking tracking app. That app is going to uh, allow all the bounty hunter stuff we've been talking about and the security stuff. We've got some dynamic events, continued work on backend tech support dynamic events. We've seen that one already. Um, ATC system rewrite. Rewrite the ATC system to utilize a backend service, making it compatible with server meshing. Yes, please. That runs through the through until the summer, by the way. Air, a, uh, ATC being air traffic control. Under. Thank you, Jake. Uh, we've got some unannounced. We've got some miscellaneous support and bug fixing. Bug fixing. Uh, comma ray status on backend. Communicate comma ray monitored zone status changes to backend services to enable incorporation into quantum and virtual AI. Mm -hmm. Not a huge task. It's only got uh, two weeks of engineering time, but... Uh, this is all preparing for them to roll out that uh, to roll out quantum. They have to make sure that everything can be tied into it, so it can all talk to each other. All the bits can talk to each other. Yeah. Uh, then there's a full implementation of security system um, thing. A you security might network. Security network v one. Yeah. Yeah. You things that you might need a clearance level to access doors and elevators, etc. So that that will come in there. Uh, then there's a Grim Hex race, a space-based scramble race beginning at right. Grim Hex. They already built in the uh, the infrastructure for this at Grim Hex, so all the leaderboards and everything are already there. They just don't have the actual race in there. So it looks like that's in May and June. That work. And then we've got Dynamic Mission System V2, uh, another six weeks expanding on the first uh, iteration of Dynamic missions prisoners v3 updating the current prison locations to include a more challenging escape route involving ai interaction <laughs> and stealth gameplay yes please i really need to um, get myself thrown in prison at one point so i can experience what it's like right now well i don't know how many riddick games there were but at least one of the riddick games was quite Pretty much the entire gameplay was based around that, and was Escape from Butcher Bay at the time. Escape from Butcher Bay. That game was yeah. the best looking game on the original Xbox. It was an astounding Jesus. game. Original Xbox, Escape from Butcher Bay. I it, it I don't remember what tech it used. It might have been bump maps or something. Like there was some new tech that it used at the time that was brand new that made it look like the walls weren't just like sheer walls it made them look bumpy and it was mind-blowing that game was so good um chronicles of riddick escape from butcher bay fantastic game and yeah like it was it was uh it was like a first person brawler slash shooter but you had to like interact with people and escape from prison and find different ways like it was it was it was really good sorry that was an aside you just reminded me because it was one of my favorite yeah. games at the time that was that was at the time it was also lauded because most games that were made from movies were garbage and that one was definitely not garbage so well it's because riddick uh riddick. Vin Diesel's own game studio made it, and yep. he is a gamer. Yep. He's yep. also a huge D&D &D nerd. Yes. He's a huge nerd, which is fantastic. So, uh, also on the topic of spawn closets. Adapt spawn closets to su support persistent NPC spawning. All right. <sighs> this. Oh. What's wrong? Oh, I'm just looking at the next one. Ah, subsumption service slash server mission logic. So this is porting the current subsumption mission code to a service and implementation of a select subset of tasks to be used on that service. Includes implementing communication between service and mission logic running on the DGS. All which I know is, is a dynamic dynamic game service. All I know is subsumption is good. And improvements yes. to subsumption are good. Uh, and then dynamic population, which I think is pretty in uh, interesting. Um, 
I, I'm assuming this is just... If... Because uh, CIG have talked for a while about how if a location is is prospering and doing well, then the population will look different than if a location is poor and not doing well, right? So I'm... I'm I'm assuming the dynamic population ties into that. Yeah, that's my assumption as well, for sure. Next one is the modular team. Let me just close this down. We are at time. Do you guys want to just keep going through this? I, I, that is why I said this show was going to be longer than usual. All right. Um, but I don't I, know if Shiver would if Shiver would prefer to like get on with his day. That's totally cool with me. I want to play Phasmophobia after this. Um. Well, we can. We're gonna be. I able don't to have skip. a particular time. Let's go um, through modular, and then we'll we'll save the rest of them for the next uh, next week's show. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, that said, I do want to get. We do have two questions. I want to answer them right now because let's do them. Let's do them right now. We're we're fudging sure. everything. More anyway. questions. Uh, Kedexen asks, uh, whatever happened to the Cortex section they were supposed to add into the roadmap? That's going to be coming in a future update, I believe. Uh, and is the Daymar rally over? Anything you guys can share on it? I don't know, actually. I, I, I assumed it was over. Uh, I thought mm -hmm. it was a fair bit earlier in the day. All I can share is that, um, I absolutely love that the Damar rally exists and i'm really glad that uh i mean cig even tweeted it out a bunch of times like i'm i'm really pleased with the support that both the community and cig have given to uh the folks running the Damar rally and as jake says uh for connection cav's question uh the core text section is next week Next week, okay. Yeah, so because it's going to be next week and then it's every two weeks after that, so we'll see updates every two weeks. Okay, let's hit modular. Um, we've got Lots refining cool stuff in here too. Yeah, go for it. Uh, the, Zylo has publicly said that the next update to the roadmap is on the twenty seventh. Um, anyway, go. we've got we've got refinery overlays. So introducing non-commercial overlays to the uh, entry areas of refinery stations. Very we've got cool. Jump point spacescaping, creating the environments around jump points, which I'm really excited for that. I just um, set off my uh, security system, in my house. What? It's Why? Just my, my security system in my house beeps when something loud happens in the house. Oh. And it went, <laughs> I just clapped really loud and it beeped upstairs. <laughs> it's like, hey, something loud happened. <laughs> oh, anyway. Sorry. Jump point space escaping. Yes. Um, I, I'm, I'm excited for this just because I remember Freelancer and I remember you'd hit the, like, uh, jump points between. Uh, between areas and they were always beautiful and I loved how good that game looked at the time and I can't wait to see what CIG make these jump points look like with with mm -hmm. the you know with the cloud tech they've got going on and and the like I'm just I'm really excited to see what these look like um, I really hope that they don't I, I want it to not be too busy um but also still be impressive. Like Mass Effect, the the relays in Mass Effect oh. Oh. were beautiful and impressive, but like clean and gorgeous. I'm 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 hoping we get something that looks really cool. That's all. I'm Well, I don't I might be wrong on this, but I don't think and it's one of the things I like is that we won't get that trope of this massive circle in space that's used as a gate. Because jump points move, not all. Well, not all we, jump points move. This but. this specific one they've already showed us. The one between Stenton and Pyro does have the the ring, but that is not a Star Citizen will always have rings around jump points because, as you mentioned, they some of them move, and and some of them just don't have any infrastructure around them at all. 
like and some of them well beyond that some of them we don't actually even know the location of yeah um anyway but, I'm, uh, I'm really this, excited this task to start is, sorry go ahead this task is specifically about the one between stanton and pyro and it wraps up well it run, the on the roadmap right now it runs through the end of may <laughs> Um, and it will have cloud, uh, cloud tech apparently, um, uh, gas cloud tech, <laughs> and rest stops and such. Nightbot's going after Jake. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, it's gorgeous. That's so gorgeous. I love That's that. That's a real gooder. Like, I love that. Um, next up, we have docking ship to station, which is in this coming patch. Where is it? There it is. Yeah, it's uh, hopefully done in March-ish for art and design and such. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's important. Uh, yeah, that's it's just important. All of this is important, but we've been waiting for like things like the Merlin to be able to dock to the Connie for a long time. Um, yep. And there are a lot of ships like the Hull series that can't dock or can't land on stations. Right. Like the, the Oh Hull... yeah. The, re the really, really big ships can't they have nowhere to land. Yeah. Yeah. They will so... need to dock. They absolutely have to dock. I'm, I'm like excited the whole the that. whole E. You can't land a whole E anywhere. Yeah, regardless, like not on a planet or or station. You can totally land it. Can't fly it afterwards. <laughs> you might also be able to land it when it's in its um um accordion compact in state. yeah compact state yeah. But when it's full of cargo, you're not landing that anywhere. Yeah, <laughs> unless you don't want to fly it again after. Yeah. Uh, then we've got some MISC support, and then we've got the Akiro cluster, a uh, cluster of dangerous charred asteroids. Uh, some rare materials can be found there. That's going to be good. Um, I think that one's in Pyro, by the way. Yeah. And then we've got some Stanton asteroids, replacing the current Stanton asteroids. Yeah, they, get rid of those Stanton asteroids. Honestly, they're horrible. Uh, dynamic environment updating the emergency outposts as a proof of concept for the new dynamic interior environments uh, this includes allowing for players to use the multi-tool tractor beam thanks to additional interactable props and consumables yes please so we can start causing havoc in interiors is, yeah. is how I read this anyway I like that. I like that havoc is your in uh, like straight to havoc. It's the first thing you want to do. No, no, hang on. I figured it out. We know that there's uh -oh. a janitor. We know that, that janitor can have a mop in a bucket. We know that there's a multi tool that allows you to pick things up and m manipulate it, right? So, can we take the janitor's bucket, turn it upside down, put it on a shopkeep's head, and then steal everything in the shop? There you go, Jake. That's your that's your task. You got to make sure we can do that. Although, if it's a well built game, the guy in the shop will just take the bucket off his head. <laughs> 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 um. So the next one's because I actually didn't see this one when I was first looking through the the roadmap. Um, this one's a small home as an outpost. Um. It's going to be 28 weeks, uh, carries through um, until about July. Uh, seven artists and one designer are working on this. And it will be a small home for players to live and shelter in. Uh, they consist of a central hub and a few optional external or, or, in, or internal or external modules. They provide basic necessities to support a small group of people for an indefinite amount of time. Very cool. How do we get one of those? Um... Beg Chris Roberts. <laughs> I I want one. Uh, spawn closets are next up, but we've already talked about them. Uh, this yeah. is additional support for spawn closets. Um, then we have two, 
We have another unannounced, another bug fixing, and then we have another one for cooperative locomotion, which we already talked about. Jump points. Building out the functionality, visual, and auto effects, uh, sorry, audio effects for the jump points used to travel between systems, <laughs> setting them up in game, including necessary vehicle items and functionality, the jump points themselves, and their inner tunnels. Yep. That we that work finishes in September, by the way. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <sighs> I. Why is it called September when it's like? It's. It's not the seventh month. I know. It's yeah, yeah. I had to double check before I said. Um, I really actually, I actually, um. <laughs> I'm going to get back to you, but I read all about this at one point. There is a, there is a good reason. they The year used to start in a different spot, so it used to actually be the seventh month, and then they changed the way the months work, so now it's not the seventh month anymore, but they still call it September. Really? Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. It's also why October, which is eight, comes after September. They changed the freaking order of the month, so it doesn't make sense anymore. <laughs> and December 10. Exactly. Yeah. Makes total sense. It's sept, oct, nov, so nine, and then D D C, which is ten. Yeah, no, it totally makes yeah. sense. And then they totally fucked it up by mixing them around the months. <laughs> was that the change from the Gregorian to the Julius candle or the other? I don't remember. That's why I wanted to. Oh. I'll... Interesting. Yeah. Anyway, so I got. Hopefully, ask we just you guys. blew somebody's mind on our YouTube video. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta ask you guys because I've been thinking about jump points a lot, and okay. it's not just like you click the jump point and you go through, right? No, you gotta fly through. You gotta fly through. I'm yeah. not a very good flyer, and I'm starting to think no. that I don't I, hit my, the wall. Well, I'm gonna hit the walls. I'm gonna hit the walls a lot. I'm gonna hit. I'm. I'm probably just gonna go in there and intentionally hit the walls. Um, <laughs> I'm hoping that I can still play if I can't not hit the walls, you know? So there, there is actually some information about this um, in the annals of Star Citizen. Basically, the idea is, um, and I don't know how they're going to implement it, but the idea used to be that if you wanted to be somebody who was going to explore a jump point and the first time you go through it, generally, you will have to do it manually. But once your computer on your ship knows how to do it, if as long as the jump point doesn't change, which some a lot of them won't, but a lot of them will too, so it's sort of a... But as long as it doesn't change, you'll be able to do automatic flight through it later. Now, that, I think, is one of the number one things they're going to have to test in beta. What if it's all manual? How many people die? <laughs> like, <laughs> What if it's all automatic? How boring is it? And, and more know? important... Can I buy <clears throat> the path from someone else? Yes, probably. But what if what if it's not going to be quite implemented like that, as in you've got this full six degrees of freedom control? What if it's like the ship basically knows the route through, but instead of having to just correct, you know, with a joystick and whatever, you've got to put in navigation coordinates or something like that. I'm thinking uh, the movie... Wing Commander, for the threes of people that have seen it, when he actually is going through uh, some timey wimey whatever thing, he sat there, he's flipping these switches and doing all sorts of crazy sci-fi mumbo jumbo as you want to do in a sci-fi film. But what if it's more like that? Instead of you've got this complete precision control over things, you're just putting in smaller various inputs in the right time, like almost like a rhythm game, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Thumper, but Star Citizen. I barely know her. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, moving along. We have Outpost theme variants. So this is going to be uh, 29 weeks, starting from the middle of the year, going through the end of the year, with seven artists and one designer. Um, they're adding themed variants to colonialism outposts, which allow us to create different points of interest in the world. Themes will range from abandoned or mining or excuse me or research or many more different 
uh, variant. So basically making sure that not all the outposts look the same, that they have a wide range of appearances, probably even, um, I'm guessing they also want to be able to show um, how long an outpost has been there visually. Um, they've, already dis- they've already discussed that tech of like having sand dunes pile up slowly around uh, mm. and making making the the outposts look like they've been there for a while so yep uh prisons version three uh, we more challenging about escape route Aaron halo uh adding the Aaron halo asteroid field between crusader and arc corp and then more on dynamic events awesome okay we did it we made it like halfway through the roadmap <laughs> We're about halfway through the roadmap. We're on planet content team next. We've got a bunch of Squadron 42 ones that'll go through. uh, There's hardly anything we can talk about in there. uh, So yeah. How about for a feature that the roadmap doesn't have a bookmark? So in exactly this circumstance, someone could just say, you know, I want to place a bookmark here. So when I come back to it, logged in, that's where my bookmark is. Can that happen, Jake? Would you want that to happen or is that pointless? He's already mentioned that you'll be able to um, like favorite certain um, deliverables and teams as well. I I just want a like new th- new so I items. Favorite Melissa Estrada. <laughs> I want no. I want something where like new items that update show in a different color. Like if if a new a new team and a new feature was added in that that current update it's different so that you can sort of scan oh absolutely a, a bit more easily because there is a it lot need, there it needs to be very easy to see i i agree with that it needs to be very easy to see when something has changed you're welcome jake yeah In, yeah Mr. i take I, category when i take my i take my uh royalties in uh uh fizzy water <laughs> Spicy water. <laughs> All right. That was a lot of fun. It's nice to be back. Yeah, we are Remember, back. Did you have fun hanging out with us? No? I didn't think so. Who? You. I said, Shiver, did you have fun hanging out with us? Oh. <laughs> you I just sat there and stared at me. It was terrible. I wasn't sure if you were talking to me or the three <laughs> viewers. Um, Actually, I'm really impressed. You know... I have to say, as a as a sidebar here, we did have a little bit of heartburn about changing the time, more than a little bit actually, um, but we kind of had to do it. Um, we were a little worried, but we ended up with over twenty viewers, and that's um, a good portion of the people nice. who used to watch. So that's uh, that's pretty awesome. Thank you very much for joining us. We very much appreciate um, it. We don't, and we had some viewers on YouTube on too. Twitch either. Oh, excellent. We don't delete the VODs on Twitch either, so, you know, it's always going to be on Twitch until it's rotated out. It's archived automatically on YouTube now. So, Yeah. Uh, come back next week, 9 Eastern. So that's about two hours ago from right now. Next week, Saturday. Um, we're, we're working on some other stuff as well. It's sort of been a rather hectic time as i'm sure everyone understands but we are working on some more stuff so so keep an eye out for that um sure you got anything coming up wednesday the continuation of our rather spectacular london by gaslight victorian age vampire the masquerade chronicle carries on uh with all manner of special guests coming this week i think uh, someone's going to be playing Bloodlines again next week, so we we talk shit to him as he plays it. <laughs> and in the interim, you never know, we might play Among Us or Phasmophobia and stream it. Perfect. Um, if you Eric? Hear constant swearing. So, um... I mean, yeah, of course. Uh, Tuesday, um, we'll probably be bringing... Uh, is that a yes? We're... We're coming back? Okay, good. Um, Tuesday, we are bringing back the Unnamed Game Show. It's coming uh, coming back. Um, Shiver, I would like you to be on, because it, it's been a while. Would you like to be on? You don't have to be. I can do that. Sweet. You can totally Thanks. tell us to go time. pound sand. Uh, the exact same time as this show um, on Tuesday. 
our time Tuesday. I'd probably do that. Why Sweet. do you want me on there? Because you've played games over the last month, and Shiver, we want to talk to you about them. Shiver, because we enjoy your company. No, really. Why do you want me there, then? Because we enjoy your company. <laughs> Who are you, and what have you done with Eris? <laughs> He's asleep. We can we can regale them about look, tales look. of our ridiculous here's, Among Us games. No, no. Here's the thing. So you know, you know, <laughs> on Twitter, you oh, always was... see, you know, on Twitter, you always see those people that are like, you know, stretch your shoulders, you know, push out your <sighs> wrists, breathe deep, unclench your jaw. Well, David unclenched his jaw, and that's how I got in. Okay, that's where we There was this time we were playing Among Us, and uh, I, I did my famous trademark maneuver of kill someone. Someone saw me kill it, so I reported the body, and I was like, that dude, that dude fucking killed him. And it was CS's brother, and CS was the only one there like, no, look, no, Valios, I know his tones. He is telling the truth completely. And only CS believed him, and everyone believed me and voted him out. And I was like, I fucking won this game. I don't care what happens. I have fucking won. Nice. Yep. Amazing. It was great. Well, everyone, thanks so much for tuning in. And uh, hey, we'll see you Tuesday. And if we don't see you Tuesday, we'll see you here next week. And uh, stay safe. And uh, I hope you have a very good new year. <laughs>